Hey everybody, Julie the Whippy Chick here. And today I am going to do a tutorial on how to make this uh, dripping paint blanket. At least that's what I call it. Um, I don't know that this is really any specific pattern. I don't think it's something that a designer came up with. Um, I think it's just a particular stitch pattern um, that someone came up with and I saw on an unfinished project and decided I liked it and decided to take it apart and see what I could do with it. So this is my take on it and I will also show you uh, the original that I saw. So I'll put mine away and here is the one that I saw. Now I found this unfinished blanket in a box of yarn and a few other unfinished projects um, um, a neighbor uh, that gave it to me it was her mother's and it was never finished I instantly fell in love with this pattern I thought it was so pretty um, so I took it apart for a few rows just to see how you know it was stitched together and it's very very simple now I will say the difference between this one and mine is the stitches on this are very loose so I think that they used a hook that was maybe much bigger than what the yarn called for okay this is made almost completely of single crochet there are three rows of single crochet and then the dripping part um, is double crochet and it's simply just double crocheted down into the previous rows so like right here it's a regular double crochet but over here and over here you're basically just inserting your stitch into the previous rows so it's really an interesting look but it's very very easy to accomplish okay um, if I were going to do it again I would probably use half double crochets in double crochets or a much bigger hook to kind of make it go a little faster and to give it a little bit more drape. Uh, my blanket is very, very dense and it took forever. <laughs> I don't mind saying it. So that is what we're going to do today. It's very simple, um, five stitch repeat, okay, in each row. And then after that, there's a four row repeat. So it's very simple and I'm just gonna put this away and we'll get started. Okay, so in my blanket, I used um, Impeccable by Loops and Threads. Uh, this is all I actually have left from my project. Um, I just have these two colors. So that is what I'm going to use to show you how I made um, the blanket. I am not going to recreate the whole blanket. I'm just going to do um, a small swatch so you can see how it's put together. You can make the blanket any size you want um, as long as you are starting with a chain of a multiple of five uh, plus one. The one would be your turning stitch, okay? So without further ado, I think we'll get started. I think I'll use the green to start with and we'll go from there. So we're going to, uh, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you, I am using a size five millimeter hook, which is the recommended size for this yarn. Again, um, you might wanna consider going up a size just because you might want a looser, less dense blanket, <clears throat> if that makes sense. Okay, so we are going to start with a slip knot and we are going to chain in multiples of five. I'm going to do 15 just because I think that'll give you a good indication of how to get this started. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 15 and now I need to make my turning chain so that's my plus one so there's my one okay and the first thing we're going to do is just singles 
uh, crochets all the way across and we are going to start that in the second chain from the hook because remember this one here is our turning chain so we're not going to build into that we're going to build into the next one so single crochet into the next one and in every chain all the way across so there's one two three four five six seven I don't know about you guys but I always hate that first row <laughs> where you're building into the chain it's always so awkward for me don't know why it just is and when you're doing it on the camera and you're trying to make sure to stay in frame and looking through a viewfinder <laughs> it's even more awkward but that's okay we'll get through it if I got through it when I did a whole blanket I'm sure I can get through it for doing just 15 stitches um, by the way, um, my blanket, I made it 40 inches wide. I just wanted it to be a baby blanket size. So I used 150 chains plus the turning chain. And if you'd like a written copy of this pattern, it is up for free on Ravelry. Um, so I will leave a link to the pattern in the description below. Okay. Okay. So here we are. We have finished our first row. Okay. And I'm just going to count and make sure I've got my 15 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And this one's kind of curved over here. 15. So there's our 15th stitch. So we're at the end of that row, our first row. We are going to chain one. Okay, and turn our work. We are just going to now repeat the exact same thing we just did. Okay, there's a lot of repetition in this pattern. So now we are going to single crochet in all of our stitches all the way across. Ta dee, ta dee, ta dum. I always kind of run out of things to say, but I won't sing for you. <laughs> that would be pretty hideous if I were to start singing in the middle of the tutorial. Would you believe I used to teach little people little children, all kinds of things. And I always did it with songs. I used to be a pre-K teacher, which means four-year-olds. I used to be a teacher of four-year-olds in pre-K. Taught them all their ABCs and numbers and how to write their names and numbers. It was a lot of fun. I kind of miss it sometimes. Okay, we are almost to our last stitch. Remember Mr. 15 there, he was kind of curved around. So make sure you get both legs of that V and pull those up through. If you don't know how to make a single crochet, I will leave um, a picture of the video here. Um, where? Maybe here. <laughs> uh, and also a link in the description below so you can go and check out how to make a single crochet if you don't know how to do it already. Okay, I'm going to once more chain one, turn my work, and I'm going to do another row of single crochet all the way across. And you can see these rows 
I'm not very wide, which is why this is kind of a slow growing project. It's a great project if you're not in a hurry and you want to savor it. And you're more patient than I am. I tend to be impatient. Not for all things, but for that blanket I definitely was. Okay, almost to the end of this round. Round. Silly me. This row. Okay, and there's 15 more stitches. Okay. So now we've gotten to row four, and we're actually going to change colors for this row because now we're going to start our double crochet where we go down into our previous rows. So I'm actually going to back up here on finishing that stitch. I'll just take it out completely, show you what I mean. So for that last stitch, we are not going to finish it. We're going to insert our hook pull through our loop and we're just going to have two loops on our hook and that's when we're going to join our next color so I am just going to get my little scissors hang on a second guys I always forget something it looks like I forgot my scissors okay now I can snip that yarn and as always <coughs> excuse me okay as always you might want to leave a long tail because you are going to need to weave that in at the end of your project so what i do is i just grab the end of my yarn my new yarn place it over my hook like that and just pull it through that's all you need to do and we're going to chain one I kind of snug that down a little bit just to anchor everything in place. Turn our work. And now we are going to work on our double crochets. Now comes the fun part. Now comes the spike stitch, which is the real name for the dripping paint stitch. It's called the spike stitch. And here's where we're going to form it. Now, we are always going to build into this first chain. The turning chain never counts as a stitch, okay? So we're not ever going to build into that. We're going to build right into this green one here. So we're going to do our double crochet. So we're going to wrap our yarn, insert our hook, pull up a loop, pull through two. Oh, I split my yarn a little bit there. Let me see where I split it. Let me try it again. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through two, and pull through two. Now that is a regular old double crochet. I'm just going to pull this tail, keep things a little bit tight over there. Now this next stitch I'm not going to build into this top part of the stitch. I'm actually going to build underneath it. Usually, do you see this little hole here? Usually that's where we're inserting our hook, right under that V, but we're going to go a little lower. We're gonna go underneath it. Okay, so you're gonna wrap your yarn over your hook, insert way down here, pull up your loop. You're gonna to need to keep it a little bit loose because it is going a little further. Pull through two, and pull through two more. Okay. The next one, we're not gonna go here, we're not gonna go here, we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom. Okay. So yarn over, insert way down here. Pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. Now we're going to do the next stitch just like we did this one here. Not all the way down, but not all the way at the top either. We're going to go in the middle. So yarn over, insert your hook down here, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two more. And now we're going to do two regular old ordinary double crochets. So yarn over, 
into the regular part of the stitch right up at the top there pull through two pull through two and do the same thing again okay so I'm just going to cover this part up this is the entire sequence right here from here to there the whole sequence and so now with this stitch I'm starting another sequence so I did one there I'm gonna go a little bit lower pull through two pull through two now we're going all the way down to the bottom see here's the top and the middle and if you pull your, your stitches apart, you can kind of see where you're going to insert your hook if you're having a hard time finding it. It gets very easy to find after a little practice. Here's the top, here's the middle, way down here is where we're going to go. So yarn over and way down here. Pull up that loop, pull through two, and pull through two. Now we're going to the middle part. So it's right there. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through two, and pull through two. Okay, the next stitch is going to be right up on the top. And that ends the sequence once again. So now we're going to start it again, right up on the top. Down to the middle, and then all the way down at the bottom, back to the middle. running out of yarn here. And now the last one is going to be right up at the top again. Whoops. There's the second leg. Right up at the top again. So you can see how that's starting to come together. So the next three rows are going to be just like the first three rows, all single crochet. And chain one, turn your work and single crochet across. I might speed this up to go as fast as I wish I could really crochet. <laughs> And now we're at the last stitch before our color change, so we're going to stop there. Snip our yarn. And change color once again. Now, I'm not going to go much further than this, but I do want to show you something that's kind of um, interesting about this pattern. So I'm just going to 
tie on this green yarn. Start my work on this side. So we have a double crochet in the first stitch. A double crochet down in the middle in the next stitch. Double crochet all the way down in the next stitch. Double crochet in the middle on the following. And back up at the top again. Okay, so the interesting thing that I wanted to show you was that it's easy to know if you've done enough rows because these rows are so narrow, it might be kind of difficult to see. Oh geez, did I do two? Did I do three rows? It's very easy to tell because all of your ends are gonna be on one side, okay? Which is kind of nice when you're weaving in ends, you don't have to go looking for them. They're always gonna be on this one side here. All right. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so we've got here a very, very, very tiny little blanket. Look how tiny it is. Maybe it's for a mouse, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I am going to show you how I did my border. It was very simple, and I'm not even going to go all the way around, but I, I will show you how I did um, the top, the sides, and the corners, because then you're just going to do the same at the bottom and the other side. So what I did was, a slip knot, insert my hook, and you can kind of insert your hook wherever you want into your project. I'm going to just pick a random stitch right here, and I'm going to pull up a loop just to kind of anchor things down a little bit. And I'm going to do a half double crochet right into that same stitch because it's just I really just did that pull th that little slip stitch to anchor it in place so a half double crochet into that same stitch pull up a loop pull through all three so that's my first stitch and I'm gonna just oops continue to do that all the way to the corner so another half double another half double Another half double crochet. I like to use the half double crochet at least to start the border because it moves a little bit faster than a single crochet. But I find the double crochet is almost too much. It gives it a little, a little bit too much width, I guess you would say, to start off. That's just me. So here's another half double. And now we're coming to the one at the very end. This is our last stitch in the row. So I'm going to put one stitch in there and I'm going to chain two stitches and that's going to give me my corner. And then I'm going to do another half double crochet right into that same stitch. So here's another half double. And that has formed my corner. And no matter how many rows of this I do, I always do it that way. I do one half double crochet, two Sing, or two chains and then another half double crochet into there. And so now you come to kind of a tricky part. It's kind of weird because there's no real stitches. Like at the top you have these beautiful V's to build into and you don't have that on the side. And the best I can tell you is just kind of eyeball it. Um, this kind of takes a little bit of practice. You don't want too many because then your border gets wavy but you don't want too few because then your border is tight and it squishes everything up. So what I tend to do is just put a stitch in every row. And if it looks good, then it looks good. If not, then you just go back and try to fix it. <laughs> so I'm gonna just put one in this space here. And I'm gonna find a little space here in this row. And I'm basically just kind of wrapping my yarn around these rows. This looks like a good spot. 
and this looks like a good spot and that kind of just gives me four stitches for every color again you might want to just play with this a little bit it all has to do with your tension and the size of the stitches but that's just kind of like my simple math <laughs> if there's four rows I do at least four stitches but that's kind of how I work my way around and again if it doesn't look right to you go ahead and, and just pull it out and fix it that's the wonderful thing about crochet is it's very easy to fix mistakes you you know as long as you can come back to one loop on your hook you know you can do it again it's very forgiving it's a very forgiving art form <laughs> so I'm just gonna find a space here and find a space here now remember with our first color we only did three rows all the other rows we did or all the other colors we do four but that very first one you just do three because you change color on the third oops get through there and then again looks like I'm getting close to the end just going to find a spot to make a corner. This looks as good as any. Um, and then chain two to make my corner. And go right back into that same space. Okay. And across the bottom, you can really see where your stitches were. It's pretty easy to find them. And there are you. <laughs> Sometimes you have to you have to speak firmly to the stitches. Let me in there. Okay. So that's how I work my border. And of course when you get, you know, this first round of um, half double crochets, you can build very easily into those stitches to make really elaborate borders. Um, I just went around it a couple times with with the half double crochet, but feel free to get as um, ornate as you want. Get exciting, people. This will be fun. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave you there um, and let you just get as creative as you can. I'd love, 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 huge, make a heart here, huge love to see um, what you guys come up with. And if you'd love to come over and join the the Facebook group. I would love to see everything there. You can post on there, all your pictures. Um, it's called Crochet Connections, Whippy Chick Crochet Connections. You can find it on Facebook, and I'll also put a link in the description below. Come on over and join us. It's a small group, um, but it's a fun group, so we'd love to see you. Okay, everybody, take care. Enjoy making your paint drip blanket. See you later.